Welcome, I'm Ramon from Bold Like a Leopard, and we're doing another Troll Tribune interview today at 1 p.m. Eastern Time uh, with uh, Enric Lark, who is an economist from the University of Barcelona, specializing in regional, urban, and service economics. Uh, he is active in a lot of the uh, business community over in Barcelona and the surrounding region of Catalonia. Now, much of the American audience that's watching this will probably ask, what is Catalonia and why should I care? Because people in America, honestly, they don't know what's going on in Canada or Mexico. So why would they care about what's going on in a, you know, in a, in part of Spain? Well, we've been hearing a lot of talk this year since the election about Cal Exit, which is a separatist movement to have California leave the United States. Now, I personally don't think, and that's for a debt separate discussion, that the Cal Exit will actually succeed. I think that there is a number of factors that will uh, prevent people from actually wanting to leave the United States, especially in terms of the fact that they've never lived in another country and they probably have to start from a different point. Leaving a country and proclaiming independence means that to a certain extent you have to formulate a new law system and new trade treaties and all of the sorts of affairs that an independent state has to conduct. And a lot of people are not prepared for that. However, in Europe, there have been countries that for, for years have tried to gain independence, not just in Europe, and in fact, all over the world that they wanted to leave the country where they are a part of or the union that they are a member of and strike out on their own. I mean, it can go from Quebec, which is a autonomous province of uh, Canada uh, with uh, full rights along with the rest of the provinces. They've tried to separate from Canada several times unsuccessfully, uh, losing in several referendums. Uh, you could talk about um, our civil war, where the southern states attempted to violently secede from the Union and, uh, in fact, attacked Fort Sumter, causing uh, war between the states. Uh, that wasn't, by the way, the only separatist rebellion in American history. There have been other ones. They just haven't been as famous. In the years 1814 to 15, during the War of 1812, which uh, went on a lot longer than 1812, obviously. Uh, New England uh, Federalists tried to secede from the Union because they believed that the Three-Fifths Compromise, well known as one of the causes of the Civil War due to the slavery issue, they wanted to leave the Union and establish a more uh, unitary form of government. Also, did you know that the state of Vermont separated from New York in 1777 to become an independent state. So there's plenty of examples of secessionism and separatism having a place in American politics. Now, what, but why would you say that it's such an important issue in the world today? What's going on in Catalonia? Well, Catalonia has become one of those countries that is in Europe that is currently undermining the order of uh, nation states there uh, as part of the expansion of the European Union. Now, the people of Catalonia may not necessarily know that. I believe that they are mostly, uh, based on the research I've done, they're in favor of the independent Catalonia remaining part of the European Union. However, what they do not take into account is that their very activism and their uh, agitation for independence is causing the undermining of that European Union idea in and of itself. You should know, uh, those of you in America, that the idea that the European Union is a democratic body that uh, it forges together all of the free democracies of Western Europe is mostly a deception. One of the first proponents of an independent of a unified Europe was Oswald Mosley. Now, for those of you that aren't uh, aren't buffs in pre World War II British history, Oswald Mosley was the head of the British Union of Fascists and a key supporter of Adolf Hitler before World War II. 
Another person who proposed such a union was Francis Parker Yaki, who was a noted racial white supremacist after World War II from the United States. He was one of the first pan-European nationalists to emerge out of Europe after World War II. And what was the, the reason that so many of these people uh, began to, or, or that any of these people began to be active after World War II? It is because they realized that Europe was, to put it lightly, uh, so weak after the war that they feared that it would become uh, basically colonized and exploited by the Soviet Union or the United States during the Cold War. So what happened during the Cold War? You did see that many of these states were manipulated by the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, however, despite all that, at least in Western Europe, many of these, we many of these uh, nations continued to have an independent identity. The Netherlands did not become some pawn country of the United States entirely. They maintained their Dutch language and their identity and their culture. And indeed, for a long time, these countries uh, prospered in the post-World War II era, uh, not just because of the Marshall Plan, because of their free economies. Uh, you saw strong nation states develop in Germany and Austria and Italy and, the, and uh, to a certain extent in, in uh, Northern Europe and the Nordic countries. And that's why Europe became the economic power that, it is, that allowed it to even consider forming a European Union. But why is it that the European Union ended up becoming this uh, intrusive and coercive body that it is? The fact of the matter is that these nations in Europe don't necessarily have much in common with each other. Uh, they, they can trade with each other and they have plenty of things to share with each other and they have a lot of cultural uh, similarities in terms of, uh, obviously a lot of them are Roman Catholic, for example, in Southern Europe. And then you have ones that are mostly, uh, you know, the, the Scandinavian countries. They have Lutheranism, they have a lot of uh, the same cultural motifs and, and uh, music. It's not really strange to, to recognize that there are regions of Europe that have great commonalities. But if you look historically, the maturity and cohesiveness of each country is very different. Uh, you have to take into account that both Italy and Germany only became unified countries in the mid to late 19th century. Originally, Germany was uh, just this hodgepodge of uh, feudal lands like uh, Bavaria and uh, Westphalia and uh, the Rhineland and Prussia that unified under the, th under the iron fist of Otto von Bismarck, who's known as the Iron Chancellor for that. He, he basically uh, schemed to get Germany to unite under a single uh, emperor. Uh, the, I think his name was uh, Kaiser Wilhelm. So then um, Italy also, they had to go through a long and painful period of wars and uh, intrigues in order to unify uh, under Vittorio Emanuele. Uh, and then they became a unified country. But do, does that really tie them together, the fact that they were unified politically? Not necessarily. You still have regions of Germany, such as Bavaria, that are that show a, a streak of independence uh, in terms of policies and, and mentalities. And in Italy, it's even, it's even more pronounced. Southern Italy, for example, has uh, long believed that they're an abused stepchild of the rest of the country. Uh, and Northern Italy, which is an economic powerhouse, thinks that Southern Italy is dragging it, it down. Well, what about Spain and what, why is it that Catalonia is trying to succeed? Well, if you, you really look at the regions of Spain, um, it's, it's arguable that they're even one country. You have the Basque country. They don't even speak a dialect of Spanish. It's a completely different language. has no relationship to Latin, uh, one of the more obscure and difficult to understand languages in Europe. Then you have uh, the southern Spain, which is a uh, depressed and, and uh, poor uh, region, mostly influenced by 
Northern Africa in terms of uh, what, what's going on now with the migrant crisis. And then, of course, you have uh, Castile, which is where Madrid is, the capital. That's the traditional Spain that we think of. But then there's other parts of Spain, uh, Galicia. Their dialect of Spanish has a lot of similarities to Portuguese. P Portugal at one time was, uh, you, you know, the, their, culture, their cultural similarities to Spain were very strong. It's just that their leaders and their um, political system, they decided they, they were not going to unite with the rest of the Iberian Peninsula. So they became an independent country and haven't really looked back since then. Uh, but, but if you look at Galicia and even more strongly Catalonia, they show a tendency to really stand apart from Spain. Uh, we can get into it, but you know they started out as their own country until 1137. They were their own country. Then there was a union between one of the pre-Spanish kingdoms, Aragon and Catalonia. Uh, that was through marriage. And then later there were political uh, political unions that were stronger, but they had their own institutions for over for almost 600 years, not quite. But then, because Spain became an empire, it became uh, a, a real nation state, they suppressed the Catalonian identity. And uh, through all of the tumultuous years of Spain in the 18th and 19th and 20th centuries, Catalonian separatism was a major theme. Because whether Spain is a kingdom under Catholic uh, uh, inspiration, as it was for hundreds of years, or if it's a republic, which is mostly uh, socialist, or if it's the fascist state under uh, Francisco Franco, uh, Catalonia has been a major fault line as far as what does Spain mean in terms of a nation state. Uh, the, the people of Catalonia, they maintain that they have their own separate culture, religion, and language, which is, if you read it, it's somewhat similar to both Spanish and French, but it's clearly not the same thing as Spanish. It's, it's almost as if uh, we were to talk about uh, the Scots, who did try to separate from the United Kingdom. So we're going to talk to uh, Professor Lark, or Larch, I'm not sure how his name is pronounced, we'll see tomorrow. And uh, I'd like to see if there's anybody who has, uh, you know, some pointed questions about what's going on there. And uh, look, when this happens, uh, this referendum, which is supposed to happen on October 1st, uh, either way, I believe, and this is, this is the whole issue with my preview, I believe that what happens will cause a huge earthquake in the European Union, either way, whether it's, whether the referendum votes in, to, in favor of leaving or against it. And here's why, because the European Union uh, changed the dynamic of this whole conflict. Until Spain became part of Europe, the Catalonians were trying to separate from a nation state. But the European Union is eroding the concept of a nation state in Europe. Uh, the, these countries that are parts of Europe are almost uh, surrendering their cultural identities. You can see that in the way that they react to terrorist attacks. Even, even the United Kingdom, which is trying to leave the EU, is not properly addressing the migrant crisis, a crisis that's mostly created by the spread of wars through in interventionism in the Middle East and in Africa. Um, you, you can see it in Germany, which is mostly giving in culturally to Islamicization. Uh, th this is not a crack against Islam. It's just saying that these countries, they don't treasure their own culture at all. So therefore, they let other people come in and impose theirs. It's, it's just uh, a crazy mess over there. So what's to stop these countries from breaking up within themselves? What's to stop Spain from really breaking up? What, what does Spain give to the people of Catalonia that the whole European Union can't give them? Uh, as I believe in direct democracy, I think that Local control is what gives people the belief that they can contribute to the system. Now, Spain granted to Catalonia the status of a commonwealth, giving it autonomy after the end of the Franco regime. And therefore, Catalonia does have representative democracy at the local level and, and 
Um, you know, they do have that. But on the national level, um, they get taxed by the Spaniards and they get taxed. And, and on the supranational level, they get taxed by the European Union. So why would they need both of them? In, in reality, they could potentially decide we don't need to be part of Spain in order to be part of the European Union. So screw it. We're just going to become our own independent country, have our own language, have our own uh, uh, trade um, relationship with the rest of Europe. Because there really is nothing that being a Spaniard contributes to uh, the uh, everyday life of these Catalonians. Their industry is uh, really governed by European law uh, just as much it is, as it is by Spanish law. And um, it's the same as when we have these people who want to form new states here in the USA. Uh, now, if Catalonia were to not be accepted into the European Union, or if Spain was to suppress this Catalan secession, if, if they would win the referendum, then you would see a new scenario that would also be kind of dangerous, okay? Let me explain. This would show that Europe is not really... Uh, interested in uh, validating the voice of the people the, in the public vote. And, and, and there's been ample evidence of this in the past anyway. You don't need the Catalan referendum to prove that. But now the people of Catalonia would know that in reality, the European Union is interested in helping who? The elites. Now, let's say we take the opposite scenario where Catalonia votes to leave Spain and the European Union supports them. Well, who's going to get pissed off by that? Well, the rest of the Spaniards, uh, or a lot of them, they would say, well, I guess the European Union really doesn't care about nation states. We don't have a real identity. Our, our, we, we're really more citizens of Europe than we are citizens of Spain. Now, okay, so there's some, some people actually believe that that's true, and they, they support that. But... There are plenty of people in Spain, especially under the current government and administration, uh, that have a strong Spanish identity. So you will see either way, the fault line is going, going to be drawn. Either the Catalan people will understand that uh, Europe is not uh, going to give them the validation they need through their democratic process, and, and it's going to cause a shockwave among separatists in Europe, or, or Spain will realize that their national identity has been completely uh, just eroded and uh, has rotted away under, under Europe. And you will see nation states try to leave yeah. Europe. And I think that there, there's a no-win situation for the European Union, therefore, if the referendum votes to leave. Okay, now if they vote to stay in Spain, I think that some of these scenarios can be avoided, but at the present time, I, I have a feeling, you know, um, I'm, I've been looking at the polls, I have a feeling that they will vote to leave the European Union, I don't really, or to leave Spain, sorry, I don't really have a preference either way, uh, I don't really see uh, why I would be in favor of an independent Catalonia as opposed to Catalonia being part of Spain, but, you know, we'll figure out that, that, that out tomorrow. Uh, with the interview with uh, Enric uh, Larch. And uh, please tune in, uh, give, give us your questions, and uh, you know we, we will see exactly what this means for the geopolitical order. So have a great night. This is Ramon Bolega Leopard, Troll Tribune, tomorrow at 1 p.m.